Standard advice given to people who want to be ready for emergencies is that they should get and have N95 masks, nitrile gloves and goggles. However, very seldom is information given on how to correctly use these pieces of personal protective equipment or PPEs for short. And this can lead to inadequate protection and unintentional exposures to contaminations. This video, we're going to be dividing it into two parts. The first part will be about keeping uncontaminated areas safe, and the second part will be using CDC guidances and instructions on how to put on and take off common PPEs. So please stay tuned. The slides I'm basing my talk on today were originally intended for medical facilities by the CDC. They talk about gowns as PPEs. In emergency situations, if you don't have gowns or Tyvek suits, I would consider any outer clothing, including shoes, to be equivalent to gowns. Generally, you put on PPEs in safe areas before going into or touching contaminated or possibly contaminated areas. These contaminated areas could be grocery stores, workplaces, or even a sick room. Then you take off these PPEs before you go into safe areas like your home or even your car, taking every precaution not to contaminate your safe area. Basically, and this is very important, not only do you need to use the PPEs correctly, you need to follow proper procedures when removing them in order to protect yourself and your safe areas from contamination. And remember, anything that enters your safe area from the outside needs to be sanitized. An example would be if you go to a gas station to tank up your car. Because you don't want to touch the gas pump to avoid contamination, you put on gloves before you exit your car and touch the gas pump. After fueling, before you remove your gloves, you in error come in and touch your steering wheel. What you have just done is contaminated your steering wheel with whatever was on the pump handle. The best procedure would be to safely remove and dispose of the gloves and wash your hands before touching anything inside of your car. Another example scenario would be that the coronavirus has spread and is endemic to your area. You've just gone to the grocery store with a full face mask and gloves to pick up needed items. You enter your home, you remove your gloves and mask in an entryway, you leave your clothes on and then sit on your couch and let your kids or spouse or whoever pick up your PPEs and then put the items which weren't sanitized away. What you have just done is expose everybody in your home to any contaminants that were on your PPEs or on the items that you brought from the store. A better procedure would be to safely remove your PPEs, including your outer clothing and shoes in a designated area, along with the items from the store. While you directly head without touching anything to the shower, someone else dons on PPEs and they sanitize the bought items and wash and sanitize any non-disposable PPEs. This designated area would then also become a contaminated area. The point I'm trying to make is, in these two scenarios, is not only do you need to use your PPEs correctly, you need to remove them correctly and do everything you can to protect your safe area from contamination. It does no good to correctly use your PPEs, then contaminate yourself and your safe area by removing them incorrectly. So how to use your PPEs correctly? The first PPE that we're going to talk about is the disposable respirator. Even before you put on the respirator, you need to wash your hands thoroughly. If you have used a respirator before that fits you, use the same make, model and size. You also need to inspect the respirator for damage. If it appears damaged, do not use it. Replace it with a new one. Do not allow facial hair, hair, jewelry, glasses, clothing, or anything else to prevent proper placement or to come between your face and the respirator. 
And if there is any doubt, follow the instructions that come with your respirator. The first step in putting on the respirator is to position the respirator in your hand with the nose piece at your fingertip. Then you cup the respirator in your hand, allowing the headbands to hang below your hand, holding the respirator under your chin with the nose piece up. You then take the top strap and it goes over and rests on the top back of your head and the bottom strap is positioned around the neck and below the ears. You're not supposed to crisscross the straps. You then place fingertips from both hands at the top metal nose clip and then you slide your fingers down the metal strip to mold the nose area to the shape of your nose. After you have placed your respirator on, you need to check the seal. You do this by placing both hands over the respirator, take a quick breath in to check whether the respirator seals tightly to the face, then you place both hands completely over the respirator and exhale. If you feel leakage, you do not have a proper seal. If air leaks around the nose, readjust the nose pieces described. If air leaks at the mask's edges, readjust the straps along the sides of your head until a proper seal is achieved. If you cannot achieve a proper seal due to air leakage, ask for help or try a different size or model. Removing your respirator is just as important as when you put it on. Do not touch the front of the respirator as it may be contaminated. You remove the respirator by pulling the bottom of the strap over the back of your head followed by the top strap all without touching your respirator. You then discard in a waste container the respirator and wash your hands. Washing your hands after removing your respirator is one of the most important yet overlooked and not stressed enough step in properly using a PPE. So after using a respirator, wash your hands. If you want more information about how to properly use a respirator, the CDC and OSHA has tremendous amounts of information that you can find here or just by doing a quick Google search. The next piece of PPE that we're going to talk about is gloves. Before putting on a glove, again, you need to wash and thoroughly dry your hands. When you put on the gloves, make sure that after you have put them on, that they are not ripped or damaged in any way, shape, or form. If you do damage them, you would need to replace them before going out into a contaminated area. As with face masks, how you remove your gloves is just as important as wearing gloves. So to remove your gloves, first you grasp the outside glove at the wrist without touching your bare skin. You peel the glove away from your body, pulling it inside out, and you hold the glove you just removed in your gloved hand. You then peel off the second glove by putting your fingers inside the glove at the top of your wrist and you turn out the second glove inside out while pulling it away from your body, leaving the first glove inside the second. You then dispose of the gloves safely. You do not reuse disposable gloves. After you remove your gloves, you should immediately wash your hands. This again will prevent cross-contamination. The third piece of PPE that we're going to talk about are goggles. Since there are a vast array of styles and types, it's important to follow the instructions given by the manufacturer when you put them on and that you ensure that they fit properly. As with all PPE, how you take your goggles off is just as important as how you put them on. First, you need to assume that the front of the goggles are contaminated, so you need to remove them from the back. If your hands get contaminated during the removal process, you will need to wash your hands. If your goggles are reusable, then they also need to be sanitized before you put them on again. We have talked a lot about washing hands, but we haven't described how to do it. When we say you need to wash your hands, we don't mean a simple rinse off or a 5 second soap on soap off procedure. We mean the procedure that the CDC recommends, which is a 5 step procedure. The procedure starts with wetting your hands with clean running water, turning off the tap and applying soap. 
You then lather your hands, rubbing them together with the soap, making sure that you lather the backs of your hands, between the fingers and under your nails, and that you scrub for at least 20 seconds. You then rinse your hands well under clean running water and then dry your hands using a clean towel or air dry them. If soap and water are not readily available, you can use alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. And you can tell if the sanitizer has this 60% by looking at the product label. Sanitizers can quickly reduce the number of germs on the hand in many situations. However, they are not effective when hands are visibly dirty or greasy. While using hand sanitizer is much better than not washing your hands at all, it is not as good as using soap and water and may not get rid of all germs. If you use hand sanitizer, read the hand sanitizer label to know how much the manufacturer recommends to use and place the amount that they recommend on the palm of one hand. You then rub your hands together, rubbing the gel over the surfaces of your hands and fingers until your hands are dry. This should take around 20 seconds. So far, we have learned how to put on and take off our PPEs. We have learned proper hand washing technique. The next part of wearing PPEs is the sequence for putting them on. And the sequence, according to the CDC, for putting on personal protective equipment is number one, you put on your gown or Tyvek suit. Number two, you put on your mask or respirator. Number three, you put on your goggles or face shields. And number four, you put on your gloves. They also recommend that we use safe workplace practices to protect ourselves and to limit the spread of contamination. This means keeping our hands away from our faces, limit the surfaces that we touch, and we change our gloves when they are torn or heavily contaminated, and always perform proper hand hygiene, which means washing our hands often and regularly. The CDC also has a sequence for taking off personal protective equipment. In their procedure, the first item to be removed are gloves, then goggles or face shields, then gowns, then masks or respirators, and then finally, washing hands or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer immediately after removing the PPEs. Depending on what our scenario is, at this point it would also be a good time to go and shower. As always, performing hand hygiene between steps if hands become contaminated and immediately after removing PPEs is extremely important. A second example on how to properly remove personal protective equipment is first off to remove gowns and gloves, then removing goggles, then removing the masks or respirators, and then washing your hands or using alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And again, depending on the situation, it would be a good time if you're entering into your home to have a shower. This video was predicated on the assumption that extensive use of PPEs were required. We did not go into when it would be a good time to implement using such extreme PPEs because our intent was simply to help people gain an understanding on how to use the equipment that they are advised to have, not when to use them. While this video has given information on how to put on and remove PPEs, it is every individual's responsibility to learn how to use their PPEs properly in their situation. Failure to use your equipment properly can have serious consequences, so always read, understand, and follow the manufacturer's instructions. A video such as this one is extremely limited in scope and cannot take the place of proper training and practice. Study after study have shown that even medical personnel often fail to properly use PPEs, so I cannot stress enough that to learn how to use your equipment properly, you need to have hands-on instruction. I'm Andrew for 360 for 30, and as always, if you have found this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe.